Detroit wants to know. You've seen it throughout your neighborhood. Medical marijuana dispensaries going up, up, up. It's like they're just popping up, you know, like little weeds. Pardon the pun, pardon the pun. I have Dave, Senator David Knizek with me. He's written a bill, House Bill 142. Senator Knizek, welcome to the show. You can shake my hand. Thank I won't you, kill you. I appreciate it. Senator, why did you write this bill? So this is one of the first issues that uh, came to my attention when I got elected to the Senate. And uh, like you just said, we've got a number of these facilities that are popping up all across the community. We've got some guys like the folks here at Mind Right. You know, I, I trust a fellow Marine to do the right thing. Uh, but we've got some. Did some you other see his guys. licenses and all that stuff yeah, on the wall? I mean, They're on the wall. I mean, this guy's doing snuff. it right. Absolutely. Uh, but again, we've got some bad actors out there too. <clears throat> and so, uh, when I took a deeper dive on this issue, I found out number one, there's nowhere in the state law that talks about provisioning centers or dispensaries, as as we call them. So back when the voters approved the compassionate use of medicinal marijuana, the legislators really dropped the ball when they wrote the laws that was going to govern how we we structure this environment. And so number one, we want to put into state statute uh, simply the words provisioning centers. You can't enforce laws that don't exist. You can't enforce businesses that legally mm -hmm. don't exist in, in the eyes of state law. So that's number one. Number two, we want to make sure that there's third party testing of all the materials that are going out the door. You know, we don't want to be able to uh, have different strains or, or different potencies, if you will, uh, depending on which facility that you want to go to. This is medicine. We want to make sure that it's properly regulated. The third piece of that puzzle that I think is important That is, bothers me. Sure. So you're telling me somebody could have laced the marijuana and nobody would know? It is, well, you would know once you consume that medicinal marijuana. Uh, but again, we want to make sure that you know, this is medicine, that when individuals come into these facilities to pick up their medicine, what they are picking up uh, is medical grade and that it's safe uh, and that it's uh, you're going to be safe for them to consume in the privacy of their own homes. Mm -hmm. you know, that third piece of the puzzle that's, that's important is a 24-7 database uh, that a number of the caregivers and the law enforcement community have agreed on. They want to make sure that they know uh, the good actors and the bad actors. What's coming in the door, what's going out the door. I don't think you should be able to throw up a sign on the, the street corner and say, meet me at hotel room 7B, I'm going to hook you up with your medical marijuana card. Now, again, folks like mine right here are doing it the right way and they're seeing a tremendous amount of success. But we've got those bad actors out there as well and we want to cut down on that. Mm -hmm. And the last piece of the puzzle, I think this is the most important piece, full control to our local units of government to say who, what, where, when, and why they want in their community as it relates to medicinal marijuana. So you're telling me the city council right now in Detroit couldn't say, couldn't deny it for any reason? So you know, you've got cities like Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, they've passed ordinances. I know that the city of Detroit is working on an ordinance right now as well, but we want to make sure that there's actual teeth in the state laws so that if a local ordinance is enforced, uh, that the city has the legal protections behind that enforcement. How can people help you get this passed? So right now we have uh, sort of two competing camps in Lansing route right now in terms of how we want to structure this. The best thing for me is obviously contacting my office, adding your name to the list of individuals who want to make sure that we're keeping this safe in our communities. Again, when we give control to the local units of government, we can control how close the facilities are to schools, to places of worship, what the signage looks like on the front, hours of operation. You know, these are medical facilities. We don't want it to have, or we, we don't want it to be the hangout for, you know, the high school kids. So contact my office, contact the other sponsors' offices. Let us know you want to get engaged, and, and we're happy to pull folks into the fold. Give us that office number. Uh, my office number is 517-373-0994. I've got just a minute left. I have a quick question to ask. I mean, you laid waste to when you ran last year, you and my good friend Sheila Vincent laid waste to a political dynasty, the Starworth family. They're totally out of politics. You took out a sitting politician, uh, David Nathan. You took out a former very powerful uh, politician that was running for your Senate seat, Chanel uh, Jackson. You did this and everybody was like, oh my. But here you are fighting. I think that's a great thing. You're, fighting, you're fighting for something that I believe is blighting our neighborhood and is a setup for when marijuana is eventually legalized sure. okay, in Michigan. It's just a setup. They're getting a beachhead. With that said, about a year from now, we're going to have a congressional race in the 13th district. Are you considering running for the 13th district? Well, so I'm going to answer the question directly. Let me first say, when you talk about lay waste, 
you know, a lot of the folks I ran against, these are my friends. It's all right. You and still so, lay waste to them. So, you know, uh, they're, I mean, they're good folks. There's and, always and good competition between right, friends. Right, right. As it relates okay. to the 13th, very directly, absolutely not. You know, Congressman Conyers holds that seat. Mm -hmm. uh, I support everything that he's done. This is a, an icon, really, in our community. And so as long as Congressman Conyers wants that seat, he's going to have that seat and he's going to have my support. Okay. Senator David Knizek, thanks for coming by. Thank you. And I'll be watching. Appreciate be it. watching. Thank All you. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about Mind Right here on Mac Avenue, right across the street from Grosse Point in Detroit. They do it right at Mind Right. Be right back.